A while back, Shannon had the chance to speak with Sam Hoadley from the Mount Cuba Center about the garden trials they just completed on the ironweeds, the Vernonia species, during an episode of the Backyard Ecology podcast. In that podcast, the discussion also touched on many of the pollinators that utilize Vernonia, including a super cool pollen specialist native bee that relies on the ironweeds for its survival. Let's listen to what they had to say about these amazing little pollinators. And I'm glad you brought that up too, because that is definitely a consideration when we're trying to do more than just plant for pretty flowers, when we're trying to plant for creating these backyard ecosystems in this pollinator wildlife habitat, is that we have to also take into account what's using it and when. And right. like you said, the specialist bee for ironweed, um, denticulate longhorn bee, is that the right That's one? Exactly right, yep. yep. They're not active necessarily for the whole entire time that ironweed is blooming. They've got a small window, so you've got to keep it in that window if you're trying to help that particular species of bee or right. any of the other specialists that might be with any other species besides just iron weeds. Yeah, no, the, these specialists have this very, they have a window to complete their life cycle, basically, or police, complete that stage of their life cycle. Um, and we found, at least with um, ironweed, um, ironweed in the trial garden, these Melisodes bee, the bees that we were counting separately, were active exactly when our locally native species of ironweed were blooming, which, I mean, that makes all the sense in the world. Yeah, it's it's like, of course. Um, the interesting thing was that these locally native species, Bernonia novoborosensis and Bernonia glauca, um, they just struggled in the trial garden. It was, again, a mismatch of cultural conditions for these plants. Um, and because of that struggle, they had issues with disease habit they didn't produce as many flowers we just didn't count that many bees there but if you went out to our natural lands where there's stands of new york ironweed just growing there um naturally some most of them were not planted um at least by us um you saw tons and tons of melisodes there on healthy plants because they were growing where they want to grow they're growing they were correctly sighted um it's just it's very interesting seeing that you know again a healthy plants going to be able to support more insects. So citing that plant correctly is a huge first step to ending up with a healthy thriving ecosystem, even in your backyard. Yeah. And I'm going to make sure I get out more this fall and look for those specialist bees because I hadn't really, I don't know if I've never seen them, but I've never recognized them or paid attention right. to them. If I have, Cause I mean, there's always bees on the iron weed, yep. but to actually look and say, Oh, wait a minute. That's that one. That's the specialist. Yeah. I haven't done that one yet. Yeah, they're they're really fun. They're very charismatic. Um, and to just give people an idea of what they're looking for, that the females are the easiest to key in on because they're collecting the ironweed pollen, which is is bright white. It almost looks like like a bleached flower. Like it's just like it really grabs you visually. And even though it's a small bee, it's you know maybe half the size of a honeybee. Focusing in on those hind legs that are packed with that white pollen is a really great way to see them, even when they're moving pretty quickly. Uh, but they're black and white. Um, they move pretty quickly, males even more so. They're very erratic in their movement. They're just nectaring, looking for, for females. Um, but you can really watch those, those females. They're just, you know, methodically going flower to flower, collecting that pollen, which they'll bring back to their, to their ground nest um, to provision their, um, their larva with. Um, but yeah, they're, they're very cool. They're a lot of fun to watch. And um, we didn't know they were there. I just, again, didn't recognize them until we had an entomologist on site. Said, oh, we've got Melisodes here. And we were like, oh, yeah, that's that's really cool. And then we decided that, you know, we have this opportunity to count them. Um, felt like we got to know them and understand, like, oh, you know, they're getting out of bed a little late today. They're, you know, <laughs> they're showing up a little later. Um, where this is that, you know, big day for the Melisodes or not so much. And you you started to learn their favorites. And um, But they're a lot of fun to watch. And, I, you know, knowing how to recognize them, you see them at home, you'd see them out on, on walks. Um, they're around. They're a pretty common bee. If you have iron weeds in your home garden or out in natural areas around you, just take a look and look for those little, um, those little white packs of pollen on those hind legs of those bees. You'll, you'll probably see them. I was thinking the males would have been easier because of the long antenna, the long horns, but yeah, which is where they get their name from. The, the females have relatively short antenna, um, but the males are just, they're very fast, very difficult to photograph. Um, we was one of those that we were like, we really wanted to get a good photo of them for the report. And they were giving us a heck of a time <laughs> trying to get a good image of them. The females, again, they'd spend a little more time on flowers. They were easier to get in and get a close picture of. 
but um yeah and we would definitely we would see um there was a a, a pretty i'd say a, a small proportion of the melisodes that we saw was male it was maybe i tend to say like one out of every dozen melisodes that we saw was a male um, the majority of the insects that were counted were females that's just because we simply saw more of them we were counting both um but yeah again totally fun to watch um it's a really a really cool native bee the denticulate longhorn bee is just one of many pollen specialist native bees you can provide for in your own backyard in fact if you already have native plants growing in your yard it is likely there are many species of native bees already visiting it if you want to learn more about the bees in your yard, I highly recommend the book Bees, an Identification and Native Plant Forage Guide by Heather Holm. This book covers native bees and introduced species in detail, including size, when they are active, life cycle, where they nest, and how they collect pollen, and even has a section covering common native forage plants for each bee. There are sections devoted to many species of native trees, shrubs, and herbaceous plants that bees use. I will put a link to it in the description. This is an affiliate link, which simply means we get a commission if you purchase the book. No extra cost to you. We simply get a small commission from the seller, which helps support the channel. There are many species of ironweed that do well in the pollinator garden. And if you would like to hear about which ones stood out in the Mount Cuba trials, you can check out the entire podcast in this video and be sure to take some time and enjoy nature in your backyard.